Hello everyone, my name is Ashray from First Updates Now, and today we are here with Team 516 Gears of Fire from Florida, and we're at the Maryland Tech Invitational. Uh, I'm here with a boss, Miles and Ryan, and today we're going to be talking a little bit about their robot. I think they're ranked one or two right now. They've been doing phenomenal. Giving you a voice. Making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. We would like to thank our friends at Stryker for supporting fun so we can continue to make content for you. Stryker makes some of the most revolutionary medical equipment and is a big supporter of FIRST and its participants. If you are looking for an internship or a career that supports you being in FIRST, check out careers.stryker.com to learn more. AFTC fans, are you ready for Freight Frenzy? Join us after kickoff live all weekend, September 18th and 19th, as we'll be out at Kettering University for the Bulldogs Robot in 30 Hours at youtube.com forward slash first updates now. You'll get detailed breakdowns of game elements, the field, and prototyping and testing of robot components and assemblies. Watch live, view short videos after, and ask questions for the Kettering team at youtube.com forward slash first updates now. Let's talk a little bit about your robot. So I see you guys have a beautiful purple and black color scheme. Uh, and I love the intake and the simplicity of the design. Um, so why don't you walk us through the robot? How exactly yeah. does the ring move through it and what does it do? Yeah, we can start with the intake and then we can go into the drivetrain as well. So we have probably the most unique part of our robot is our string linkage drop take. And the way it works is like most teams when they run a linkage system, they use a metal beam, which can't like, you know, like metal won't go like taut or loose, right? But with string, when you pull it, when you push it up, it'll go loose, right? And so the advantage of this design is we have string that's always being tightened because we have two torsion springs here and here that are constantly pulling this, the drop take down and then we're constantly pulling the drop take down and then we have the string that pulls the drop take up right so you can see that if I pull the drop take up like that the string is getting taut and it's fighting the torsion string to pull it up and so the main advantage of a design like this is if a robot slams into us during a match all that happens is this just folds up and it stays like that and then it falls right back down as soon as it can you know it's very simple there's no uh, there's not a lot of software involved just moving these two servos but it's very very reliable and yeah. I think my favorite part of that is that that doesn't even, you know, apply any force on the servo itself. Right. So it makes it really force resistant. Right. No, yeah. Like, the, the servos won't break by the drop take getting hit and hit and hit. So that's, like, the really good part about this is we've never had to replace these servos or anything like that. So, yeah, we can show the ring going through the robot. Um, so we have our intake, and it goes up like that. And so we have a continuous intake and transfer. And the reason we wanted this is we want our robot to be as simple as possible, right? Like from A to B, we want the fewest, quickest steps. And so we found that a continuous intake and transfer really removes the complexity of like a lift that goes up and down or a magazine that rotates and things like that. And it just uh, results in a more consistent robot. Like there's less things that'll jam or break or things like that. And so we have a two motor intake. We're running two 5.2 to one uh, GoBuilder 5202 series motors. So we have one motor here. And then we originally had this one, and then we moved to add another motor like inside the robot, just so we could get more speed and torque uh, out of our whole intake. And now these are geared down 1.5 to one, so it's approximately like 3.7, 3.6 uh, for the final ratio, which is, it's really fast and it really helps us uh, during matches. And another part of our intake that's pretty cool is you can see that it's a full width intake, right? Like we have 11 inches of effective intake space, which is very helpful because in matches when rings, we have two rings that are like right here and here. We can just drive up, get both, and then one will go straight up and the other will funnel while we're driving to shoot. And so that helps us a lot in saving time and you know spending less less time in like the war zone fighting all the other robots for rings. So that's the intake. Uh, and then when you get up to the hood, uh, when you get up to the hood, you can see we have a polycarbonate hood that we um, we heat like we heated it up using a heat gun, and then we bent it to the correct shape. So we first prototyped this with foam core, and then got the right shape with the foam core, and then matched it to the polycarbonate. And this has again been extremely extremely reliable. It's sprung a little bit just so like you know if there's differences in rings and things like that, it'll always work, and it's not putting like a ton of pressure on the rings. Um, and then another part of our intake that's pretty cool are our helical gears here. So we went with heel good gears uh, for two reasons. Like the bigger teeth are better because they're like less likely to break. Um, and then also like cars often use helical gears because they're like really efficient and quiet. And so we like it, this is just a lot like a lot better for the intake uh, in our opinion. And then once we get over here, uh, you know, we have a pretty standard two motor gearbox 90 degree J shooter. So we have a custom, uh, you know, eighth inch polycarbonate 
uh, shooter gearbox with two 5202 series one-to-one -one go builder motors right in the middle and it's a three gear system so one gear on each motor and then one gear going up to the shaft so we're running a uh, four inch indie mark wheel and like the design the whole design of the robot has stayed pretty static throughout the year like especially the shooter after we prototyped our first shooter we've had this same shooter since like December right so it's really important to be like consistent and reliable with your parts because it allows us to get a lot of driver practice and so with the shooter the way that works is we just have the rings all line up in the chamber and then we have a super speed go build a servo right here that flicks all the rings into the shooter wheel and so we can show that right now you can see the ring just flies out and goes outside of the magazine and you know that's all been very very consistent um, and it's just been reliable this year so we're really happy about that if anybody's wondering we're running 3 8 inch compression on our shooter uh, you know we were just testing different things we decided we'd start with 3 8 it worked really well so we just kept it um, that's that any any questions yeah, I mean, that all looks really amazing. And honestly, I love the simplicity of the design. It just flows from one part to the other right. and just works really well, too. Yeah. Um, and I see your wobble goal right here. That also looks pretty simple sure. and straightforward. But yeah. how exactly does it work? So our wobble goal hasn't seen like too much action in Endgame because we prefer doing power shots. But in auto, I mean, it's always been working uh, this competition. So we have a we have a one servo, we have a two servo wobble goal system with one servo for the rotation. It's a go build a torque servo and then one red 20 kilogram servo for open and closing the claw and so here we use the string linkage system again because you can see if a robot if our wobble claw is down and a robot comes in and hits it these, sh these claws are gonna be completely fine right they're not gonna break and no robots gonna come like in here and then break and hit our claws right so it's not it's not it's a reasonable assumption that they just have to bend in and not out so yeah we're using the same string linkage system here so you can see it works just like a normal linkage in that you have a rotation, like you have your pivot point and then a point at which you rotate or about which you grab, like you rotate the whole uh, claw, the finger around. And then we have the same thing here, right? And so with our design, the center to center from here to here is one inch and here it's two inches or it's like a little, like it's a, maybe a little less than one inch. But basically that means whenever this rotates 180 degrees, this rotates 90 degrees. So, you know, you get that whole closing, but it, it's like more than 90, so it's probably 135, and you, you, you can do the math. Um, but yeah, it works the same way. So, this you just close. When you close it, the string linkage pulls it tight. You know, it's not going to get undone or anything. And then when you open it, the rubber bands are what's retracting it back, so it's very consistent. Uh, and then now we can go to the rotation of the of the wobble goal mechanism. So over here, I mentioned we have a go build a torque servo. Originally, we were planning on doing two go build a torque servos, but we were having some issues getting them like lined up properly and things like that. So we decided to just try one, and it worked really really well. So now this one has just turned into like a support, which you know, it's really it's really nice uh, and doesn't wobble at all. And another thing you can see is we have a really long polycarbonate arm. And the reason for this is this like shaking right here takes a lot of the load off the servo, you know, making sure it doesn't break, right? Because we have like five teams at our school, so getting funding for like buying a lot of spare <laughs> yeah. parts is like not something we want to spend our money on. So we have to really take precautions and make sure everything on our robot is protected, won't break, and you know, things like that. Yeah. I think another thing we can talk about is our drivetrain if you want. I don't yeah, know if yeah. we've talked about that yet. Um, so for our drivetrain, this has gotten undergone like some changes inside throughout the year, but like our drive plates, we've had the same drive plate since November. Uh, we've just painted them like the first they were purple, then we went white, and then we went black for MTI. Um, so the drive plates have stayed the same. It's 8th inch uh, 6061 T6 aluminum, and we ha we're running uh, Andy Mark Neverest 20 orbitals for the drive motors, and there's four of them because we're using a mechanum drive. And we're running a 16 to 1 reduction. So we have a, I believe, a 26 tooth pulley on the wheel and a 22 tooth pulley on the, uh, or 26 tooth pulley on the motor and 22 tooth pulley on the wheel. And so we changed this around like, I think January, we were just running one to one, like two 24 tooth pulleys. And then we changed it to the 26 and the 22 just to get a little more speed out of the robot. Yeah. But I think like the biggest change and like the best change we made to the drivetrain was go from the Nexus Mechanums to the Go Builder Mechanums, like the new 96 millimeter Go Builder Mechanums. Those have just been fantastic for us. Like they're really nice, they're really fast, light, they accelerate quickly, just everything's really, really good about them. Yeah. Um, and I see that yeah. in the mechanical wheels themselves, I think the core 
cores are 3D printed, right? So there's like there's like the core in between the two plates. We didn't mm. modify that. We've kept that core. But the hub that attaches the mechanism to the belt uh, is 3D printed. So we have one piece. It's a hub and a pulley, and that's what keeps like that's what allows our mechanism to rotate. And these are dead axled. So we have a quarter twenty stainless steel uh, like three inch pans that just run through the wheel and the and the bearings spin around them. Yeah. That's, yeah. a, again, a very, very sleek and uh, well-working design. Yeah. Now, one thing I really love and admire about your team's structure and the way that you've built this robot is it's really made to sustain against defense, right? And I think that's why one of the reasons why you guys have been scoring so well. Uh, and I wanted to move on to software a little bit. Uh, Miles, if you could talk to us a little bit about how exactly does your software keep up throughout the match um, to be able to score so high throughout the tele-op period? Um, yeah, so in tele-op, um, I, I guess we decided to keep a lot of things simple. Like we implemented an auto aim system, but we actually don't use it because that's just another thing that can go wrong. And our drivers are very good at manually aiming, and that something that can't go wrong because like if the goal is off for some reason they can correct for that and if our camera is misdetecting or there's a robot in the way um, but the main things that we do use in our tally app are we have a sensor at the bottom of our intake that can track rings as they go in um, and so as soon as we see a ring a, a third ring go in we know to start the shooter and that gives our drivers one less thing to worry about but it's also not a problem if it misfires which I don't think it really does but if it did it wouldn't really mess anything up um, and then we have a PID controller to maintain our flywheel velocity um, and so yeah those are our main teleop automations um, and then as far as autonomous um, we we generate our path at the beginning of every match using an a star algorithm so we recursively go through the field to find the best path. And the reason that we really wanted that system was because we thought that or it allows us to just add an obstacle. So if we know another robot is going to be in our way, we should be able to add it there. And it turned out that that was a lot harder to coordinate than we thought. And it was a lot easier to just like add a 10 second wait at the beginning of our auto. Um, but I thought that that was a pretty cool way that we could potentially stay out of our partner's way without making a major change to our auto. And again, that looks amazing. So again, guys, thank you so much for this interview. I really had a great time talking to you and getting to know uh, your robot. Is there anything else you'd like, like to share? Uh, I mean, I'd like to say thank you to our friends and family and all the sponsors who have gotten us here. You know, we couldn't have done it without you. Yep. Um, we've just been having a really fantastic time at MTI this year. And I mean, it's just truly an amazing experience. Yep, well said, Avas. All right, well, thank you guys again, and good luck for the rest of uh, elimination matches yep. soon to come. All right. Thank you. We would like to thank our friends at Stryker for supporting this video. Stryker is looking for current and future FIRST alumni to join their internship program and FIRST mentors who are looking for a great career with a company who actually supports their FIRST journey. Go to careers.stryker.com to learn more. You can also directly support FUN by joining FUN Nation. Click the Join button and just for a few bucks a month, you'll unlock special perks and directly support us so we can keep making great content. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now. And check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.